What would happen if there was no objective morality? How would our lives change? How would we talk to people with different opinions about what is right and what is wrong? Would it even be possible to make another person come around to our own way of thinking and to make them act in a way that we consider to be moral? This is a recurring theme in discussions about morality, and there is a serious fear that if morality is not derived from something objective, such as the existence and character of God, then the only force behind moral conclusions would be the lucky fact that most people just so happen to agree with them. Most people just so happen to care about things like suffering, empathy, violence, and freedom, but that by itself doesn't give us any real ability to tell other people how they should behave. And if we cannot actually enforce morality in this way, then the fear is, generally speaking, that society will crumble, or something along those lines. If everyone can just do whatever they want, that's a problem. In fact, this is the entire point of the eight-minute short film, Cruel Logic, by Brian Gadawa, who wrote and directed it because of my frustration with the absurdity of atheist ethics. In this short film, the main character, an atheist, is held hostage by a sadistic antagonist. The main character's only chance of escape is to give his captor a compelling reason to let him go, which, as an atheist, he cannot do. Please don't kill me. <laughs> give me one good reason. It's, it's illegal. Murder is illegal. You'll go to jail. I don't plan on being caught. In a similar line of thinking, Braxton Hunter from Trinity Radio provides a kind of reductio ad absurdum of non-theistic, non-objective morality. He gives the example of a hypothetical society full of people who enjoy bashing each other's heads in with ball-peen hammers. That's just what they do for fun, and they're all okay with it. Braxton's argument is that if an atheist, like me, encountered a society like that, he would be unable to tell these people that what they're doing is actually wrong, and that would seem to be a problem. But once you've decided that's what we're calling good, then there are objectively better or worse ways to get there. That's not objective morality. All you can say is, outside of the, your bubble, I, I don't like what they do. Right. I don't like it. I don't prefer it. And they would say that about you. They think bashing people's heads in with a ball-peen hammer is what they prefer to do. And you can't tell them that's bad. You can just say the people in my bubble think that's bad. So what would an atheist like me say in a situation like this, either kidnapped by a sadistic captor or dumped into a society of people who genuinely enjoy a bloodbath existence? What could an atheist say to these people to change their behavior? Let's answer this question with another question. Or rather, let's answer it with the same question but for Christians. If you're a Christian who thinks that this kind of hypothetical is a problem for atheists, then I invite you to ask yourself, what would you say in these situations? What if you found yourself kidnapped by a sadistic captor or dumped into a society full of killers? What would you say to try and save yourself from a person like this? Would you tell the person that they'll go to hell if they kill you? What if they don't agree that hell exists? Or, what if they do agree that hell exists, but they plan to repent on their deathbed? Or what if they're such masochists that they actually think they would enjoy hell? Or what if they would rather go to hell than worship your god? What then? Would you tell them that murder is contrary to God's nature and is thus objectively wrong? What if they simply don't care about being right? If rubbing frozen dirt in your crotch is wrong, hey, I don't want to be right. Christians like Brian Gadawa and Braxton Hunter will confidently and rhetorically ask atheists what they would do if other people didn't happen to share their dislike of violence and suffering. But Christians can be given the exact same dilemma, just with different key words. What if someone doesn't have the same dislike of violence as I do? What if someone doesn't have the same desire to please God as you do? What then? How would you change their behavior if the other person doesn't also value the thing that you're making appeals to, 
namely God. The only thing you could do is the only thing I could do, which is to make an appeal to things the other person already values, other goals they have, and other consequences they wish to actualize, and then to leverage those desires against their desire to inflict harm on you. If you kill me, you'll go to jail, and you don't want that to happen, do you? If you kill me, you'll feel guilty about it later, maybe, and you don't want that to happen, do you? If you kill me, you'll be going against God's will, and you don't want to do that, do you? If you kill me, you'll go to hell, and you don't want to do that, do you? And that's basically the only tool in your kit. The only way to convince someone else to change their behavior or to reevaluate their values is to appeal to some other competing values or competing desires they might have and leverage those against their desire to, in this case, inflict harm on you. Your metaphysical moral framework, by itself, gives you no concrete ability to change another person's moral behavior, even if you can prove, metaphysically speaking, that your moral framework is objectively true. This means, of course, that if someone doesn't have any competing values or desires, then there's nothing you can do to stop them from doing this immoral behavior. If their one overwhelming desire is to smash your head in with a ball-peen hammer, and if they have no other competing desires which are comparably strong, such as the desire to avoid jail or hell or feelings of regret, then there is nothing you can say to stop them. That is just the brutal reality. Fundamentally, every person's behavior boils down to what they want or don't want to do in light of the consequences they expect to create from their actions, whether those consequences are physical, going to jail, psychological, feeling guilty, or spiritual, going to hell. I understand that this is a scary thing to realize. It is scary to realize that everyone around us really is just doing whatever they want, and it's simply good fortune that most of the people around us happen to want similar things. This realization does kind of feel like having the floor fall out from under you, but that's just the reality of human behavior. In practice, when the rubber meets the road, we are all, if I may oversimplify somewhat, forward-thinking, hedonistic, consequentialists. This may not be the right way for humans to behave, it may not be how we should behave according to any particular moral framework, but this is the only way we can behave. This is just how people are. Whether you're a Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, Scientologist, or Atheist, and so, if your concern about non-theistic, non-objective morality is that it isn't an effective tool for influencing other people's behavior, if you think that all non-theistic, non-objective moral systems are doomed to impotence when put into practice, and even that society might crumble if we tried, then that's a philosophical check that your own moral framework cannot cash. The kind of philosophical club or moral baton that you want to wield against other people to enforce particular behaviors simply does not exist. It never did.